DPS panel in water, and, and it has a very, very small effect on its R value. So, you know, just, again, we can offer both, but. There was a question I missed. Yes, the question is, waterproofing on the outside, uh, below grade, we can do two things. We can damp proof with a roll-on tar that you would see on the right before the wall, but we use a water-based emulsion tar. We don't want it to be, anything wet that's going on the wall, we don't want to be petroleum-based or we'll eat at the foam. Uh, concrete sealer, gas, of course, anything like that that's sprayed on the wall uh, will start to eat at the foam. Uh, the other thing that eats that foam is sunlight. So we always make sure to cover the polystyrene. It takes a long time for the sunlight to degrade the polystyrene, but it will over a long period of time. The low grade where you don't have a petroleum-based product on it or sunlight hitting it, that foam's gonna be there for a thousand years. And I'm sure that's longer than we're gonna be here. <laughs> so uh, it lasts a long time. The white EPS that you see that we're utilizing is a much higher density than what you're going to see if you go to Menards and, and pick some EPS off the shelf. A lot of people get scared of EPS because that's the only thing they've come in contact with is a very low density EPS where you can pretty much rub the beads right out of it and, uh, and it falls apart. That's quite a bit different than what we're utilizing for our construction application. And then on the waterproofing side, if I'm not just damp proofing, if I'm in a wet area and I want to have a waterproofing on, or I just want to have a waterproofing to be safe, which we always promote uh, waterproofing, you're not going to get back at that wall. So for $500 to waterproof your foundation or less, uh, why not throw it on there and get a 30 year waterproof guarantee? But what we typically sell is platen. That's what Jerry's holding there. It's a, it's a uh, thick plastic dimple board. So the dimples go up against our wall, and then you backfill against that. That connects at the top and then drapes down the wall all the way to my footing. So water is not getting through that. And it also creates a little bit of an airspace because those dimples compress a little bit into the foam, but leave a little bit of air airspace in there. So if water does get behind it, there's area for it to go. Water will always follow the path of least resistance. So if water gets behind and there's a little air gap, it's gonna just go right down to your drain field or your stone, your drain tile, and be pumped out your, your salt pit or go into the, uh, the ground. So yeah, Latin is the most common. There are spray on waterproofings, there's roll on, there's brush on, there's different heavy plastics like that. Platin is just the most easy to come by and most widely used. We do have it available, uh, but you can get it other places as well. Good question. I'm sure you could. I don't. I haven't run into anybody that's done it. Jerry, what? If the question was, can you put an asphalt-based or a petroleum-based if you pre-treat with a water-based the poly first? I'm sure, you probably could get away with it. So. Uh, yeah, you can. However, try a little spot first and then set for a date because uh, emulsion-based tar petroleum distillates in it, that's what you gotta look for. You can put it on polystyrene. If it's cool outside, it won't do anything. But if it gets hot and the sun comes on it, then it'll start chemically reacting and it'll melt foam. So if you want to use regular tire, make sure it's cool outside, or just put it on and a piece of polystyrene, leave it sit for 24 hours. After 24 hours, it makes a difference. But if you put a water-based tire on over the top, Highly unlikely it's going to do anything with the water because it won't be through that water based tire. Now, depends how thick you put that water based tire. You just got to really thin and make it through. If you're a good base, water base. My question is who has it? Why would you put on water based tire and then put on emulsion based on the top? I'm not sure, but I, I think the states are going to change the code for the water. It wants to black, right? No, it's just that's what I'm used to. You know what I mean? I think the industry is used to that. And I don't know if the dimple board covers water. I don't think that 
I don't know if that's actually considered waterproof. Oh, yes. yeah. 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 yeah, that'll give you a 30-year waterproof guarantee if it's all correct. The reason we have to actually make a product with a water-based rubberized spray made specifically for power steering systems to make an actual full waterproof spray so it's like a tar pot it. Just like you have a four or five foundation, you spray it on real quick and you just drive away the ball. It's a waterproofer. Then they also make a product that's actual rubberized water base that actually puts a rubber coating on it that protects it so no matter what. This sheds it off, but the other part keeps it absorbing. Right. So that's what they're going to try to push everything to is the rubberized sprays. That, that's what I, I think that's up. There's literally it must be at least 80 companies, water company companies, yeah. different yeah. brands. You can spend as little as you want, or you can spend as much as you want. Uh, if you're in a real, real, real wet area, you want to be guaranteed, just spray on the expensive rubber and stuff, there's no cracks, no leaks. The reason we're pointing this out is because for cost, it's very reasonable on cost, and it gives you very good protection. The reason it gives you very good protection is water follows the path of least resistance. If you're in a real wet area, as long as water has some place to go, it'll drain out. If you're building in a lake, it's going to find a little crack or crevice. So this material here, when you put it against the wall, it's got little dimples on it. It holds it off the wall approximately a quarter of an inch. And if anything does get through this, it's just going to go on the back side of this and right down to your footing. And the most Cost effective waterproofing you can do on your foundation is drain tile and gravel. Don't, why would you chance on drain tile and gravel? It's cheap. The code says, the code is there and it says one foot by two foot or whatever it says. But that, remember, the code is bare minimum. So if you're building your own place, if you're working for a customer, put in an extra load of gravel. $100 and drain time. If any other questions come up on that, we certainly can answer or catch one of us at the break. What I missed Gary doing there, talking about, was installing that horizontal rebar. I'm sure everybody watched it, but what we do is on a 20 foot stick, you'll see there's a little bit of bend in there. So we'll put just a small little bend on the end of a 20 foot stick make like a ski so it'll just slide right over the ties. Just makes it a lot easier to shove in. We we'll simply slide it in. Now that you have your open wall concept when you're building that way, you have full access there. I can put all my vertical rebar in at this point. Just set it in, tie it right to the horizontals. I'll have some stubs coming out of my footing and those stubs are typically about every four foot. When building our walls, you'll be sliding panels up, you, you find that you're just doing it all the time for access to the inside of that wall, mainly for rebar installation and tying. Uh, but if you're up on that wall and you drop your tape measure in the wall or your string line, you can slide up a panel and grab it out. We put, as we build, you saw Jerry put the C-channel on top of the wall, possibly. I don't know if we did it after we spun it or not, but he put the C-channel on one side and left it off the other side. We will do that actually in the field, just put on one side as you build out so that you always are able to slide up the panels on the other side without the C-channel on the way. And then that's one of the one of the last things you do as you build past and you're all braced off, you know you're done with that wall section, then you can go ahead and go on and put your other side C-channel on and screw it together. We don't screw the C-channel overlaps together on top until we have it pretty darn close to plumb. So we'll show like a, a, a ICF scaffold bracing system. And we'll talk about how we can do the same thing with lumber. 
if you don't have access to an ICF scaffold, we do rent scaffold units for individuals, but sometimes logistics you know, make that difficult if it's a faraway job, getting the stuff back to us if, if it's rented. So you can certainly purchase your own or get by with just lumber if you're only looking at one project here and there. But if we screw our C channel overlaps together with that wall not real close to straight, then you're going to struggle to get it straight because the C channel is going to keep holding you out because you screwed it together while it was crooked. You can build one side completely wide open. One method I like to teach uh, first timers, homeowners, is go ahead and put that bottom wood on the opposite side just to help keep your spacing. Because again, you can always come back, slide them up and down wherever you want the tire to start. At the top and bottom of our molded panel, there's a half round. So when the next panel comes down, it of course makes a full round. That round is in there specifically for a chase in that panel. So Jerry's showing the fact that you could put a conduit in that joint if you wanted a future chase. It's one of the one of the uh, problem areas kind of that we came up with an answer to is retrofitting in an insulated concrete form because your hot wiring grooves and things like that if i have to pull through a future uh, cat 5 cable uh, and i need to get behind my drywall it's it, there's foam there so it's nice to have a chase access if you need it in the future now you could put conduit in plastic or metal or you could just leave it open and not put the conduit in, and you still actually can chase wire right through just the opening in the polystyrene as well. <laughs> 